Mother Eugenia Ravasio wrote that she personally saw God the Father in the flesh and that he sat down next to her and dictated his thoughts to her. She wrote an account of this in a rambling booklet riddled with contradictions entitled God the Father of All Mankind, and this has spawned a growing devotion called the Abba Father Devotion. First, I want to remind viewers that St. John of the Cross tells us that when God speaks to souls, the messages are intended for their spiritual effect only, and they should not be taken literally. At the same time, God does not send messages that contradict himself. So we'll take a closer look at these so-called revelations and determine whether they could possibly have come from God. The first red flag we have is that Mother Ravasio lived through the Second Vatican Council. She died in 1990, yet she never voiced any objection to the errors of the Second Vatican Council or the sacrilegious Novus Ordo Mass. Though this in itself does not mean that God could not have spoken to her, it does suggest that he would not have asked her to go public and spread novelties throughout Christendom. Mother Ravasio wrote, Having assumed the appearance of an ordinary man by placing his crown and his glory at his feet, he took the globe of the world and held it to his heart, supporting it with his left hand, and then he sat down next to me. So, Mother Ravasio says that she saw God in a very corporeal manner, but St. John of the Cross warns us, it must be known that, although these things may happen to the bodily senses in the way of God, we must never rely upon them or accept them, but we must always fly from them without trying to ascertain whether they are good or evil. For the more completely exterior and corporeal they are, the less certainly they are of God. For it is more proper and habitual for God to communicate himself to the spirit, wherein there is more security and profit for the soul than to the sense. So the more corporeal a vision is, the less likely it is that it comes from God. And you can't get much more corporeal of a vision than having God come, sit down next to you, and then dictate to you. St. John of the Cross tells us that when God truly communicates to the soul, he does so habitually and more properly through a more internal fashion. The fact that Mother Ravasio claims she saw God in the flesh is a red flag for another reason, and this is because it contradicts scripture. Thou canst see my face, for man shall not see me and live. Would God appear to Mother Ravasio in the flesh when he, that would violate his own inspired word? This is also in the New Testament. No man hath seen God at any time. It is unfortunate that Mother Ravasio didn't have a good spiritual director. A good spiritual director would have warned her with something similar to what St. John of the Cross wrote. To desire to commune with God by such means as visions is the most perilous thing more so than I can express, and one that is affection to such methods will not fail to err greatly and will often find himself in confusion. Mother Ravasio makes it clear that she says that God doesn't want anyone to fear him. I am coming to banish the excessive fear that my creatures have of me, and to show them that my joy lies in being known and loved by my children, that is, all mankind, present and future. Interestingly, this is contrary to the inspired word of God, which says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. But Mother Ravasio doubles down and seems to again contradict scripture. Until now, I have talked about many things that you already know. I wish to remind you of them so that you would be more and more convinced that I am a very good father, not a fearsome one as you believe. But scripture says, There is one most high creator almighty and a powerful king and greatly to be feared who sitteth upon the throne and is the God of dominion, the Fear of the Lord is honor and glory and gladness and a crown of joy. The fear of the Lord shall delight the heart and shall give joy and gladness and length of days. With him that fears the Lord, it shall go well in the latter end. And in the day of his death he shall be blessed. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the religiousness of knowledge. To fear God is the fullness of wisdom, and fullness is from the fruits thereof. The fear of the Lord is a crown of wisdom, filling up peace and the fruit of salvation. The root of wisdom is to fear the Lord. In multiple passages of the Bible, it says that fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, so this must be important. But Mother Ravasio triples down with her non-scriptural notion. O oh, beloved humanity, O oh, men who are my children, set yourself free from the bonds in which the devil has chained you until now inspiring you to fear of a father who is pure love. But not to beat a dead horse, scripture tells us, who shall not fear thee, O Lord, and magnify thy name? For only thou art holy, for all nations shall come and shall adore in thy sight, because thy judgments are manifest. Is it the devil that inspires fear of the Lord, as suggested by Mother Ravasio? 
Or is it scripture and the word of God himself? Scripture encourages us to fear the Lord. On the other hand, it is the devil's mission to trick us into doubting scripture. To believe in this devotion, we must necessarily doubt passages of scripture. And I submit to you that it could not have been God who authored this vision. And a warning of this type of deception is given in scripture itself. For Satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light. All men will be judged. Scripture tells us, every one of us shall render account to God for himself. But Mother Ravasio wrote, even if your sins were as repulsive as mud, your confidence and your love will make me forget them. So you will not be judged. I am just. It is true. But love pays for everything. Please note that this message of Mother Ravasio is almost identical with the message that Sister Faustina claimed that she received. The messages of both these women contradict Catholic teaching. St. Thomas Aquinas writes, It would seem that all good will be judged, since it is written, We must all be manifested before the judgment seat of Christ, and that everyone may receive the proper things of the body, according as he hath done, whether it be good or evil. Now there is nothing else to be judged, therefore even the good will be judged. And St. Thomas adds for good measure, all will be judged. Scripture warns us, now I beseech you, brethren, to mark them who make dissensions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned, and avoid them. So it seems that this is a devotion to be avoided, and there are more problems with this devotion. I'll be bringing them up in additional videos on this topic. But before then, did these visions come from the devil? Well, maybe, because they certainly didn't come from God. But I'm more inclined to think that she was just a grifter and just fabricated them as part of a money-making scam. And I'll discuss that in the next video. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll be back again within a week with another one. But in the meantime, please check out my Facebook page and my Twitter page. Every day I post additional content that you won't find on this YouTube channel. And also, please pray for the church.